Good morning, everyone. Appreciate that song, Brother Ed. Love to tell the story. I want to talk about loving and walking in truth. Second John. The book of Second John. Beginning in verse number 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of my children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. You read in uh, John's Gospel, in, in the four Gospels, you think about the Apostle John, you read in John here, he talks about loving the truth. Loving, he talks about love. He talks about truth. He talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone knew about loving and walking in truth, I believe it would be the Apostle John. Right. He walked with Jesus for three and a half years. I mean, his other disciples did too. But he walked with Jesus for three and a half years and he knew that Jesus was the truth. Amen. He knew it. He knew it. In John 1, don't turn over, you don't have to turn over, but John 1, verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 17 it says this, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ and Him alone. John was one of the three closest disciples of Jesus. There was Peter and James. John was found leaning on Jesus' bread, breath, bread, uh, breast. Remember that? Yeah. The Last Supper. He was leaning on Jesus' breath. He was with Peter and James on the mount. A transfiguration. I mean, he was with Jesus. This is how close he was. Leaning on his breath, going with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was at the Garden of Gethsemane with Peter and James and when Jesus went in there praying to the Father right before his crucifixion. Jesus, while on the cross, told John, he says, John, Here's your mother now. Talking about Mary, his own mother. He says, take Mary. You'll be her son. She'll be your mother. John was known as the beloved disciple. He said that many times in the Gospel of John. The beloved disciple. When Mary, Brother Jamie almost hit this on this morning, he saw that when Mary Magdalene told the disciples that Jesus was missing from the sepulcher, at first they were, they were kind of stunned. They couldn't believe it. But then they, Peter and John started running. <laughs> I got to find out. So they ran to the tomb and now John outran old Peter. <laughs> yeah, he looked, but he wouldn't go in. Peter said, I'm going on in. So he went on in. What do we learn from this? John's closeness with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe we will learn about an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a necessary thing for each and every soul, especially those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. An intimate relationship. It's not said, well, I was saved, you know, back years ago I was saved, but when... Are you still <laughs> saved? Are you still yeah. in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Some would tell you, well, I haven't been to church in a long time, you know, or something like that. No, it's an intimate relationship. Jesus said in John 14, 6, listen to this. This is intimacy right here. I am the way. I am the truth. He was the embodiment of truth. And he says, I am the life. There's no other way. There's no other truth 
But I'm the truth, and my, my word is truth. God's His word is truth, and He's the life. He's the life of men. He's the only life, true life. He says, no man can come unto the Father but by me. By me, the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Second John. Well, no. Look at uh, Philippians 2. My Bible don't fall apart here. In Philippians 2. And down in verse number 9. Wherefore God hath highly, also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that who? Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's no other name whereby man may be saved. No matter what anybody could tell you, he's the only way. The only way. John's reason, he had a, a John rejoiced. Look at uh, 2 John back in our text here. 2 John verse number 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly for what? That I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Look at 3 John, verse number 3. Right down from that. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Isn't that the, the parents' desire? Yes, sir. The children? If you know the Lord and you have children, you want your children to know the Lord, to love the Lord, to walk in His ways. That is our desire. And this is what John said, I rejoice to see that you're walking. You're walking in truth. You're walking in truth. What a great thing to see children walk in the truth. It doesn't always happen. We bring them up under the gospel. We bring them up under the truth. But only God. We can't save them. Only the Lord can. Right. Only He can. 1 John 2. It's not going as fast as I thought it would go. 1 John 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. I write unto you, Father, because you have known Him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, Father, because you have known Him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the Word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. See that? How that he's writing to those who are overcomers. He said, I'm writing to you. You've known. He tells you about the little children. Then he talks about the young men. Then he talks about the father. How he loves that they're walking in God's ways. Verse 21 of the same chapter. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lies of the truth. Yeah. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? The only way. He's the only way. The only truth. The only life. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that there also abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. Proverbs 23, 23 says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Yeah. Don't give up the truth for any reason at all. Truth. Isaiah 28. I go here a lot, but Isaiah 28 I think is a good portion of Scripture to read right now. Look at Isaiah 28. 
verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because you have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion... For a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment or justice also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And he and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. You see what happens to lie, liars? See, truth... Is believing truth vital? Yes, it's vital. Is going to the doctor vital? Yes, it is. If you, you go for a checkup, the doctor checks everything about you, your vital signs, to see if there's any, you know, anything wrong, any problem with you. If he finds a problem, he tells you, well, we need to do surgery or you may not make it. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to do the surgery. Most likely. Vital. Truth is vital. Truth, there's no tolerance, folks. Dear brothers and sisters, there's no tolerance with truth. There's no plus, there's no minus. Truth is exact. Truth is accurate. Truth is correct. It's precise. Just like the plumb line I had last time I showed you. There's no tolerance. Measure off that line in exact measurement, it'll be the same. There's no tolerance in truth. Psalm 14. Verse number 2. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. There are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You can think you can make it on your own. You think you can make it by self-righteousness. No, you can't do it. You cannot make it to the Lord. He alone is your only hope. Romans 1. Romans 1, verse number 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. And as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You cannot bend the truth. Truth will not bend because it is. it's the truth no longer. You might break the truth or suppress, as these folks were doing, suppressing and holding back the truth. Isaiah 59. <clears throat> Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have, his, have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered for perverseness. None calleth for justice, none nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Look at verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. 
Neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like bl the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We're in desolate places as dead men. We roar all alike bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as our for our iniquities we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward and just Justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Is it, doesn't that remind you of our day and time? Yeah. That was back in the Old Testament, in Isaiah's day. But listen, listen to our day. You don't have to turn there, but in 2 Thessalonians 2, Paul says, God will send strong delusions on men who receive not the love of the truth. Yeah. That they may be damned. There were those, and Paul, while he was writing to the Galatians in his day, to the Galatians, there were those who perverted the gospel of Christ. And Paul say, and as many... Like today, there's so many perversions of the gospel. So many, I mean, you can find so-called Bibles, I mean, that probably don't say a whole lot like, like what ours says. It might change so many things that are true. Truth is not bendable. Paul says, whoever they are, whether me or or where an angel or any of the apostles bring a, the message, a gospel, other than what you've already heard and been established in, let him be accursed. Yeah. Let him be accursed. Well, what is one to do? <laughs> I'm kind of cutting this off short, but what is one to do? Commit to the truth. Are you committed to the truth? Am I committed to the truth? It is very important. It's vital. It is vital. John said, I'm, it's so, I'm so glad to see my children walking in truth. Walking truth. We're to be walking or living in the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse number 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because... God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, wherein He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Amen. Stand fast in the truth, He says. Don't waver. Don't be carried about by every wind of doctrine. Stand fast. Hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Hold to the word, the truth. Our word or our epistle is the word of God. Amen. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, God, even our Father, which loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope. You have a good hope. Hang on to the good hope. Don't let go of the good hope yeah. through grace. Comfort your heart. Establish you in every good word and work. I can't get a whole lot of this stuff in, but stand fast together in one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We were birthed by the Spirit of God. He's in every one of us. We're the church of God. He's our head. The Lord Jesus Christ is our head. We're the body. So we should all be together as one in truth. Amen. Philippians 3. Wind this thing up. Philippians 3. 
verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have to us for an example. For many walk, whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things." Now listen to this, these two verses here. For our conversation, our manner of life, our walk is in heaven. We're sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to return one day. What's going to happen? Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. The psalmist says in Psalm 50, verse 23, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation or manner of life aright will I show the salvation of God. Amen.